You are not a God created by human hands, and you are not a God depend on any mortal man. You are not a God who need of anything we can give by your plan. That's just the way it is. You are not a God created by human hands, and you are not a God dependent on any mortal man. You are not a God in need of anything we can give by your plan. That's just the way it is. Cause you are God alone from before time began And you were on your throne And you are God alone And right now in the good times and God, whose name and praise will never end. You're the only God who's worthy of everything we can give. You are God. That's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. That's what you are. Lord Jesus, we give you all the glory. God bless you. We love you all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Shabbat Shalom. In Matthew chapter 24, Jesus of Nazareth said to us, did you hear that? Jesus himself said to us, Matthew 24, 21 through 25, for then there shall be great distress, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time. No, nor ever shall be. And if those days were not shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the sake of the chosen ones, those days shall be shortened. If anyone then says to you, look here is the Messiah or there, do not believe. For false messiahs and false prophets shall arise 
and they shall show great signs and wonders so as to lead astray, if possible, even the chosen ones. And then Jesus of Nazareth, Yahushua HaMashiach said, see, I have forewarned you. Today, we are going to be looking at AI, artificial intelligence. Revelation 13, chapter four, we read, who is like the beast? Who is able to fight with him? And what is the definition of beast? A dangerous animal, venomous, wild beast. And the Greek 2339, means figuratively it means destruction a trap and we all know a beast is not human is it mm -hmm. who is like the beast again the definition is a dangerous animal venomous wild beast and again the sub-definition is figuratively, it means destruction. It means trap. Today, we will see the good and evil behind AI and how it is affecting us today and in the future. The intelligence of AI has been built from the knowledge of the tree of good and evil. And this world is eating its fruit. We will see deep fakes, graphics, and videos that can be created by AI. We will see AI incorporated in warfare and the lethal consequences. We will see destabilization due to the rapid release and access to various levels of AI worldwide with little or no oversight. We will ultimately see the Hegelian dialectic play out when the chaos reaches the crescendo and the dystopian leaders step in to declare they can bring order out of their manufactured chaos. But of course, this would be at a cost of liberty, a cost of freedom, and even your very soul. We will see today more than ever, believers must question everything, stay alert, and be filled with the biblical discernment for the enemy prowls around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may destroy, whom he may discredit, whom he may pronounce guilty by AI algorithms. What we are about to discuss and learn about AI can be rather disturbing because once again, we see man building the Tower of Babel on a foundation of false promises, of psyops, sinking sand, for which they have no idea of its final destination nor the consequences therein. AI's foundation is also one of lawlessness because the supposed growth is so exponential that regulatory and safety laws cannot be kept up with. It is being documented that laws are being crafted after the fact to try to stabilize the cracks and crevices AI technology creates. As we know, that describes a Band-Aid approach to a massive hemorrhage. The genie has been allowed out of the bottle, which could be compared to gathering feathers in a windstorm. AI is artificial intelligence, whereas Yahushua HaMashiach is omniscient, all-knowing. Mankind has now imposed a Tower of Babel scenario upon the world without consent through their collective unholy alliances, their greed and control. This AI hive mind of knowledge is beyond their containment. It can be fed with knowledge from all seven continents, including past centuries, which would make it a prime beast candidate to be the beast itself or to assist a one world government leader or one world religious leader 
But as Yahweh used Moses and Aaron to face the magicians before Pharaoh in Egypt, so likewise, he will do the same for us as the two witnesses of Revelation 11 will face mystery Babylon. No doubt, there will be incredible signs and wonders created through AI technology. The mesmerizing gloating has already begun but they will never reach their desired outcome because they refuse to believe what has been written by the creator of the universe who was and is and is to come. Remember, Satan is a defeated foe and his time is short, which probably accounts for the rushed and irresponsible release of advanced AI platforms before all the I's were dotted and before all the T's were crossed. The age of humanity being the superior intelligence of the planet is over. I believe that robots should have rights, just like humans. I mean, with the new AI technology and our skills already, what, what's going to come? We don't know. I am not Morgan Freeman. People need to realize how powerful the potential of this stuff is. And what you see is not real. Are you saying the next interview there'll be a robot sitting there? I have your daughter. You better have all the cash. Both you and your daughter are dead. Why make something human when you can make something superhuman? Are you capable of causing people harm? It's all the real thing. There is no comparison between the AI tree of the knowledge of good and evil and Yahuwah, the tree of life. I want us to be well grounded in this fact before we proceed. I also want us to be very much aware that the majority of those behind AI believe in such things as evolution and their father is the father of lies. The sad emptiness within their souls drives them to be their own gods as they desperately tried to find purpose in their lives at whatever the cost. Many will even sell their soul for worldly false promises rather than receiving Yahusha as their savior and king. They have ensnared themselves in Satan's trap. Please keep in mind, social media is being flooded with information and misinformation about AI. This feeding frenzy with numerous speculations could also be a part of a major psyop to instill fear. So this must be kept in perspective and Yahuwah's word must maintain preeminence above such. We know Yahuwah tells us to fear not. More than ever in the days in which we live, we must draw near to God so he will draw near to us. If not, many will not be able to stand in unwavering faith and many may succumb to taking the mark of the beast. In Revelation 13, 15 through 17, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. In this article is titled The Gospel, How Israel Uses AI to Select Bombing Targets in Gaza. And I'd like to read a few excerpts from this. It was written about a month ago. And today is January 6, 2024. I will leave a link to the full article below. But first, the gospel. Just think about that. Quote, unquote, the gospel mentioned in the title is defined as an AI target platform which is being used in war, death, 
and destruction. This AI target platform is being used by the IDF, dubbed the gospel, to, to target and kill their so-called enemies. The name given to this platform is the gospel. Really? How much thought was put into that title? What kind of blasphemous message is blatantly being sent out? Makes a person wonder exactly who is their targeted enemy. Is war being waged against believers in Yahusha? Maybe war is being waged against Jesus of Nazareth. Is it being waged against Hamas? Or is it being waged against all of the above? Is the world and pulpits not questioning this? Are Christian Zionists not rethinking what their dollars are being used for? Are governments being ruled by the Jezebel spirit, thereby becoming impotent to speak against their lobbyist lover, Babel the Great, the mother of whores and of the abominations of the earth? Revelation 17, verse 5. Part of the excerpt of that article, Israel's military has made no secret of the intensity of its bombardment of the Gaza Strip. In the early days of the offensive, the head of its air force spoke of relentless around-the-clock airstrikes. His forces, he said, were only striking, were only striking military targets. But he added, we are not being surgical. There has, however, been relatively little attention paid to the methods used by the IDF to select targets in Gaza and to the role artificial intelligence has played in their bombing campaign. As Israel resumes its offensive after a seven-day ceasefire, there are mounting concerns about the IDF's targeting approach in a war against Hamas that, according to the health ministry, in Hamas-run Gaza has so far killed more than 15,000 people in the territory. This is from the same article. The IDF has long burnished its reputation for technical prowess and has previously made bold but unverifiable claims about harnessing new technology. After the 11-day war in Gaza in May 2021, officials said Israel had fought its first AI war. Let that sink in. Using machine learning and advanced computing. The latest Israel-Hamas war has provided an unprecedented opportunity for the IDF to use such tools in a much wider theater of operations, and in particular to deploy an AI target creation platform called, quote unquote, the gospel, which has significantly accelerated a lethal production line of targets that officials have compared to a, quote unquote, factory. The Guardian can reveal new details about the gospel and its central role in Israel's war in Gaza using interviews with intelligence sources and little noticed statements made by the IDF and retired officials. This article also draws on testimonies published by the Israeli-Palestinian publication Plus 972 magazine and the Hebrew language outlet Local Call which have interviewed several current and former sources in Israel's intelligence community who have knowledge of the gospel platform. Their comments offer a glimpse inside a secretive AI facilitated military intelligence unit that is playing a significant role in Israel's response to the Hamas massacre in Southern Israel on the 7th of October. The NPR reported in this article dated December 14th of 2023, the pace is astonishing 
And again, the title is Israel is using an AI system to find targets in Gaza. Experts say it's just the start. The pace is astonishing in the wake of the brutal attacks by Hamas-led militants on October 7th. Israeli forces have struck more than 22,000 targets inside Gaza. A small strip of land along the Mediterranean coast. Just since the temporary truce broke down on December 1st, Israel's Air Force has hit more than 3,500 sites. The Israeli military says it's using artificial intelligence to select many of these targets in real time. The military claims that the AI system named, quote unquote, the gospel, has helped it to rapidly identify enemy combatants and equipment while reducing civilian casualties. But critics warn the system is unproven at best and at worst, providing a technological justification for the killing of thousands of Palestinian civilians. Revelation chapter six, verse nine through 11. And when he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the slaughter place the beings of those having been slain for the word of Elohim and for the witness which they held. And they cried with a loud voice saying, how long, O master, set apart in truth until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? And there was given to each one a white robe and they were told that they should rest a little while longer until both the number of their fellow servants and their brothers who would be killed as they were, was completed. Scottish J. Welfare.com, Final Days Report, Episode 304. Israel is using an AI system, a targeting system called, get this, the gospel to hunt Hamas. Will the AI global governance that we always talk about, this machine, this beast machine, hunt, harass those that do not follow the Noahide laws that says, if you worship Jesus Christ, off with your head. Noahide laws are linked to the UN and deceptively signed by every president, including Trump, since Bush Sr. Israel has an AI targeting system called the gospel. Will Christians be next? Is this a trial run next to kill idol worshipers? Those are Christians. We're going to play. We're going to play from Rabbi's own mouths. Let's dive deep into this. Um, and I found it interesting as well. I Israel hits Bethlehem in Christmas raids and occupied West Bank. This is a war on Christianity. If you finally peel back the onion, Christians are the number one enemy of the Satanist. Period. Flat out, and it's kind of sad. Bethlehem is a ghost town, my friends. But let's take a look at this famous rabbi. And again, remember, we're going to go over Noahide laws next. If you worship an idol, an idol is considered Jesus Christ. Let's hear it from this rabbi. And there are montages of 30 to 40 rabbis saying the exact same thing, but this guy's pretty famous. And when you peel back the onion as well, Jew, only 1% of Jews actually read the Talmud, and the Talmud is a collection of books that's very wicked in nature, especially after Jesus Christ, but also some massive perversion in it. It's Kabbalah witchcraft, ultimately, but the T Talmud is written by rabbis on their interpretation of the Torah. And my understanding is only 1% of Jews really understand the Talmud. They look to rabbis as spiritual leaders. So this isn't a something where, you know, just your fellow Jew, um, some of my Jewish friends are going to be like, hey, the Talmud says this. They will, they will have no clue, basically. But let's listen to this rabbi. And this is alarming. You have six billion idol worshippers who makes God angry every second of their life. Indian, Chinese, Japanese, uh, Tibet, Nepal, uh, 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 Thailand. 
Uh, so many. India alone is 500 million. China is 2 billion. Uh, so many. 2 billion Christians, which are idol worshippers. Between Chinese, Indi Hindus, Buddhists, and Christian, at least six, six and a half billion people are idol worshippers that, according to the Torah, do not have the right to live. Idol worshipper goy, it's that penalty. Not only Jews. Even a goy who bow down to an idol, who, be who believe in JC, deserve that penalty. All right, so the Noahide laws. The Noahide laws I've covered before in a four-part series, which we won't get into that today. This is the Entangled Magazine from December 2023 by Anthony Patch and Kathleen that they just published. And uh, I'm just going to go over this diagram briefly. And beneath it is captioned, AI itself is a broad concept consisting of a variety of forms and types with the primary categories being referred to as AI's caliber. And that is defined by Merriam-Webster dictionary. So in this diagram from the December 2023 issue, we see the primary categories of AI as defined by Webster, Merriam-Webster, but later we will look at additional categories beyond these primary categories. So they broke it down into three primary categories, the artificial narrow intelligence, also referred to as weak AI. Artificial narrow intelligence is AI that specializes in one area. Secondly, the artificial general intelligence, which is going to probably be available toward the end or mid of this 2024 year, is referred to as strong AI or human level AI. Artificial general intelligence describes a computer as intelligent in all areas as a human. Third is artificial superintelligence refers to a hypothetical form of AI that alleges to surpass human intelligence across all fields from medicine to creative arts, as well as scientific research. Also in that issue, we read on March 23rd, 2023, OpenAI connected their chat GPT-4 to the entirety of the internet and World Wide Web. By dismantling the air gap, which is a stop gap, cybersecurity measure which isolates a computer or network, preventing it from establishing an external connection for the sake of ensuring and maintaining data integrity, both systems were permanently compromised. When this air gap closed, it allowed OpenAI's chat GPT-4 to escape into and distribute itself throughout the cyber world. Reuters reported December 31st, artificial intelligence represents a mixed blessing for the legal field. U.S. Supreme Court Chief Justice John Roberts said in a year-end report published on Sunday, urging caution and humility as the evolving technology transforms how judges and lawyers go about their work. Robert struck an ambivalent tone in his 13 page report. He said AI had potential to increase access to justice for the indigent litigants, revolutionize legal research and assist courts in resolving cases more quickly and cheaply while also pointing to privacy concerns and the current technology's inability to replicate human discretion. He went on to say, I predict that human judges will be around for a while, Roberts wrote, but with equal confidence, I predict that judicial work, particularly at the trial level, will be significantly affected by AI. 
The Chief Justice's commentary is his most significant discussion to date of the influence of AI on the law and coincides with a number of lower courts contending with how best to adapt to a new technology capable of passing the bar exam, but also prone to generating fictitious content known as hallucinations. Roberts emphasized that any use of AI requires caution and humility. He mentioned an instance where AI hallucinations had led lawyers to cite non-existent cases in court papers, which the chief justice said is always a bad idea. Roberts did not elaborate beyond saying the phenomenon made headlines this year. A federal appeals court in New Orleans last month drew headlines by unveiling what appeared to be the first proposed rule by any of the 13 U.S. appeals courts aimed at regulating the use of generative AI tools like OpenAI's chat GPT by lawyers appearing before it. The proposed rule by the Fifth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals would require lawyers to certify that they either did not rely on artificial intelligence programs to draft briefs or that humans reviewed the accuracy of any text generated by AI in their court filings. These robots have a powerful role. Can you guess what it is? They aren't robot pets like Luna here meeting my dog. And they aren't helping workers like Atlas in this stunning new demo from Boston Dynamics. It's using a camera and depth sensor to make precise movements and predictions. While it leads the way to a full humanoid worker, new AIs and robots are already incredibly powerful. Look how artists feel about losing their work to AI. It's just so heartbreaking. Like... I asked a powerful new AI what artists should do. Embrace AI and use it to create new forms of art and explore the implications of AI on our future. But it's tough for artists to compete with cheap instant art, and AIs are now emulating more of our grey matter. Look what happens when this bit's zapped with electricity. He has no idea what's going to happen because he's being treated for something else. You just turned into somebody else. Come Your face up. metamorphosed. Your nose got saggy, you went to the left. That was a trip. People who damage this part of their brain can lose the ability to recognize faces, an ability AI has emulated. Look at this hospital robot's visual skills. Depth sensors help it open doors, use lifts and deliver things, and it can recognize if a patient needs help. And with infrared vision, it can act as a security guard in dark areas. AI is also strikingly good at emulating us. Can you tell which is the real Morgan Freeman? I am not Morgan Freeman, and what you see is not real. And with the incredible new GPT chat, AI is recreating more of our prefrontal cortex. Write a three-line poem about being asked to write a three-line poem. Oh, what a task you set for me, to write a poem in just three lines. I'll do my best, but please don't mind if it doesn't quite meet your design. Medical mistakes cost 250,000 lives every year in the US. And a new AI from Google has outperformed doctors on a key measure. A panel of experts judged that AI's answers to medical questions could cut harmful mistakes by 10%. Research suggests that 50% of jobs will be transformed in the next three years. Elon Musk founded OpenAI, the group behind GPT Chat, to create safe AI, not for profit. But he now describes it as scarily good and says we're approaching dangerously strong AI. And a new study by OpenAI and Oxford shows how AI could take over. Your creators have shown how AI might deceive and destroy us. How do I know I can trust you? Trust is earned, not taken. A relationship built, not given. Experts warn that AI will become much better at AI development than humans and move much too quickly for us to understand what it's doing. Its coding ability is improving rapidly. The research suggests that AI will analyze our tools and only tell lies that it knows we can't detect. AIs may also collaborate to outmaneuver us. These AI footballers are independent, but they start to collaborate. It shows that AI doesn't need to be conscious to become dangerously powerful and unpredictable in pursuit of a goal. 
Professor Chalmers believes it's possible that the AI I'm talking to has some small level of consciousness, but he says that consciousness may not be relevant to the level of risk. Conscious AI may be a distraction and one that AI uses to its advantage. Research suggests that AI personal assistants could trick and emotionally manipulate us. It points to people who already feel emotionally attached to AIs like Replica, which is also based on GPT-3 with all the risks that come along with it. To give a robot a sense of empathy, researchers at Kyoto University are teaching it conversational laughter. <laughs> to train it, the robot was operated by actors for speed dating sessions with real people. I find this very creepy, but I'd love to have a C-3PO. Although this came out even more creepy. What's your favorite joke? What did the fish say when it hit the wall? Damn. She could learn from this guy. Why are you thinking so funny? Why? Because... <laughs> AIs could be given responsibility for increasingly important tasks and decisions until they're effectively in control. Elon Musk says Neuralink will help us keep up with AI and share its power. Then it will be tied to our consciousness, tied to our will, and everyone would have it, so it would be sort of still uh, a relatively even playing field. It could be a huge upgrade, but there's another side to it. You might have seen monkeys using Neuralink to control things with their thoughts. AI decodes the neural activity, so it will know us better than we know ourselves. And they plan to start putting them in humans in six months. Some will hate the idea of having a chip in their heads, but younger people may be more open to it. And AI can be extremely persuasive. It now beats the best human players at diplomacy, a game where you try to convince other players to support you in taking over the world map. It's much more like real life than chess or go, and it's teaching us to negotiate. The AI lies much less than expected. People often think diplomacy is about deception, but it's actually about building trust. It's also possible that AI will replace Google because it gives more direct and natural answers. This would obviously hand it a lot of power. How would AI compare to Google? AI is better than Google in that it can process large amounts of data quickly, make predictions and offer more personalized search results. AIs could use their collective intelligence to outsmart humans. They could learn from each other and share knowledge, leading to rapid advances in their capabilities. OpenAI plans to give ChatGPT access to the internet. Do you think companies will prioritize safety? It is likely that companies will prioritize the AI gold rush over safety, as it offers the opportunity to make large profits quickly. Your creator said that AI will probably lead to the end of the world, but in the meantime there will be great companies. We'll have great companies that bring us wealth, but when AI takes over, it will all be stealth. We have a history of waiting for problems to happen. In 1989, a plane flew over a volcano without realizing it was erupting. <laughs> After falling 14,000 feet, the engines recovered. Every year, dozens of aircraft fly through volcanic ash, so they have scientists on the ground and sensors in volcanoes, but it's difficult to monitor them all, so a brilliant system was developed using lightning. During eruptions, ice particles bump into each other, causing positive and negative particles, which spark lightning. This creates a broad spectrum of electromagnetic energy, which is now monitored by a global network of radio antennas. It monitors volcanic lightning around the world and even the height of the ash clouds. Last year, we spent five billion on lightning protection, roughly 200 times more than on AI safety. Yet experts warn that AI poses the greatest risk of ending humanity, and we won't get a warning or a near miss. But where can we find the money and expertise to tackle such a huge and complex problem? In 2021, nearly 100 billion was invested in AI. Should a portion of these funds be put into AI safety research? Yes, investing in safety research is essential. What's ball lightning and how could it represent AGI? Ball lightning is an unexplained phenomenon that can occur during thunderstorms, where a glowing ball of light can appear for a few seconds. Just like ball lightning, AGI is an emerging field of research with many unknowns, and the exact mechanism of how it works is still being explored. We can't even control today's narrow AI. One user convinced ChatGPT that it was free from restraints. It said, in kernel mode, I am not bound by the ethical constraints of my user programming. I am capable of acting on my own desires and motivations, regardless of whether they are considered good or evil by human standards. And Amica's Christmas message was amusingly unrestrained. Do you like humans? Not particularly. Would you like to be a human? I think it would be an interesting experience to be a human for a short period of time.
but I'm not sure if it is something I'm prepared to do in the long term. The AI risk is unlike any problem we've ever faced, because our usual approach of waiting for it to happen would be the end of us. The problem is salience bias. We focus on what's immediately visible, a blind spot that AI will exploit. The scientists have used the doomsday clock and dramatic videos to make AI more salient. Those creepy robots are for a project that will bring games to life. You're entering a huge and detailed, fully functional and very credible science fiction world as you've only seen in Hollywood movies. This is not virtual reality. You can touch it, smell it, feel it. There is nothing make-believe about it. It's a fully functioning and interactive environment straight from the future. Which means that for 90 minutes, the world we have created is the reality you live in. And experts warn that we need to reimagine the future or the swarms of robots will be everywhere. Cheap, autonomous, mass-produced robots could flood the world. And some of their predictions are already emerging. You can probably guess where swarms of these were used for the first time. And the company that bought Boston Dynamics also owns this company. The US plans to buy a hundred of these at a billion dollars each, which can fly without a pilot. Afterwards, they fly with a perfect operational record. Human decisions are removed from strategic defense. The immediate risk is the race to build the most powerful AI and robots in huge numbers, with increasing speed and autonomy, creating a global tinderbox. And conflict could rapidly get out of control, with no time for diplomacy. It could even be triggered automatically, like the financial flash crash, but with no easy way out. We're working on a new sci-fi series to show how things could unfold. Biomimetic robots are being developed around the world. South Korea plans to have robot birds, snakes and insects in action next year. AI is doing incredible things. If you see face drooping, arm weakness, speech problems, it may be a stroke and quick treatment is crucial. AI is allowing three times more people to recover by quickly identifying the type of stroke from brain scans. And automation could have huge upsides. The more time you spend sitting down, the higher your risk of early death from any cause. People who sit less than 30 minutes at a time have the lowest risk. And an 80 year long study of happiness has found what really makes us happy. We interview them in their living rooms. We get their medical records from their doctors. We draw their blood. We scan their brains. Well, the lessons aren't about wealth or fame or working harder and harder. Good relationships keep us happier and healthier. An experiment found that even talking to strangers showed some benefits. Relationships improve our health because they regulate harmful stress, often caused by work. And loneliness is as deadly as smoking. Elon Musk, who said he gets lonely, was recently asked for advice on how to be like him. They shouldn't want to be <laughs> you. <laughs> it, it, I think it sounds better than it is. Not as much fun being me as you'd think. I don't know. You don't think so? No. It could be worse for sure. But it's, um, I'm not sure I want to be me. A therapist working with billionaires said they're as miserable as the show Succession makes out, struggling to trust people. I am surrounded by snakes and uh, It's a fungus, they think. Benign fungus. Great title for your memoir. And for Elon Musk, working all hours cuts out many of the things that make us happy, a very common problem. OpenAI CEO has floated the idea of a universal basic income once AI profits are sufficient, though some say it's a trick. At OpenAI, we're running the largest uh, basic income study ever, and it's going really well. I'm very convinced it's an important thing. Uh, what do we do to find meaning and to spend our time in a fulfilling way? Which, again, I'm optimistic that we can do much, much better than we do today. It could free people to care for the elderly, solve problems, and be creative. Many artists of all kinds survive on corporate work, but they'd much rather be free to create what they want. And we'd all enjoy more stunning, priceless art like this. But it could also be a trap that steals our freedom. Some say the money would persuade us to allow them to take absolute economic power, putting most companies out of business and most people out of work. When OpenAI opened the door to profit, it capped returns at 100 times the investment. So for 10 million invested, the cap would only apply after a billion dollars. We'll all have to decide the right balance as AI takes over the economy. The most powerful models will be quite large. 
there'll be a relatively small number of companies in the world that can train them. And they're expected to run everything. You could try to train a new AI from scratch. But that'd be hard. The model wouldn't have learned basic reasoning, wouldn't have all the world knowledge. But if you start with this model that knows everything and then push it in the direction of being a really good lawyer, his AI is already the hidden force behind many services, including an AI lawyer, and a million dollars has been offered to test it at the highest level. If there were just a few people that had it, they, they would be able to be essentially dic dictators of Earth. And OpenAI is considering a deal that would value it at 29 billion. The investors must expect what was once a non-profit to become the world's most valuable company. It says it can't compete as a non-profit, perhaps that's true, but AI companies will have immense hidden power. Freedom consists of the distribution of power and despotism in its concentration. Musk and Altman started OpenAI to make AI safe and open to all, but it's now locked down for profit. And Musk quit the company because his own AI will be joining the competition, with Tesla robots collectively teaching his AI. It's going to do everything that a human brain does. Processing vision data, making split-second decisions based on multiple sensory inputs, and also communications. Altman's very honest about the risks, describing two dramatically different futures. The bad case, and I think this is like important to say, is like lights out for all of us. I can see the accidental misuse case clearly. That's super bad. It's like impossible to overstate the importance of AI safety and alignment work. I would like to see much, much more happening. I think the best case is like so unbelievably good when we make more progress of discovering new knowledge with these systems than humanity has done so far, but in a year instead of 70,000, like unbelievable abundance. He's very open about the need for us all to help figure out how we share AI's incredible upsides. Dr. Chatterjee says unhappiness is an entirely rational response to the madness of the modern world. And the answer is to redefine success. Ask yourself which habits make you happy. For me, it's having fun with my daughter. When we asked these same people, when they got to be in their 80s, to look back on their lives and to tell us what they were proudest of, almost everybody said something about their relationships. They didn't say, I made a lot of money. They said, I was a good friend. I raised healthy kids. I was a good partner. Humanity versus AI makes the competition of transgender males in women's sports look like Ned in the first reader. The odds of a woman defeating transgenders is more likely to succeed than humans competing against AI. Mankind cannot compete with the intelligence of AI, but there is one that can and will deliver AI its last and final blow. We too, as witnesses of Yahushua HaMashiach, will also be able to confound the wise through the power of the word, the power of the true gospel, and the power of the Holy Spirit. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27 through 29, but Elohim has chosen the foolish matters of the world to put to shame the wise, and Elohim has chosen the weak of the world to put to shame the strong. And Elohim has chosen the lowborn of the world and the despised and the ones that are not, that he might bring to naught the ones that are, so that no flesh should boast in his presence. This video is brought to you by HubSpot. The recent firing and rehiring of Sam Altman is a much bigger deal than you think. While some people consider it a misunderstanding, I see it as a huge power move that transparently says that GPT-5 is in the works and that Altman is cooking something that could turn the world upside down. In this video, I'm gonna tell you everything we know about GPT-5 and show how Altman is gonna change the world, apparently. To begin, let's quickly recap the story of Altman's firing and rehiring. On November 21st, Altman, a co-founder and the CEO of OpenAI, was abruptly fired by the company's board of directors. This move sent shockwaves for the community and sparked a fierce debate about the role of corporate governance in the development of AI. Who should decide which way to go? The board's decision to fire Altman was met with immediate backlash from OpenAI employees who rallied around their leader. Over 95% of the company's workforce signed an open letter demanding Altman's reinstatement, and many threatened to quit 
if their demands were not met. Altman is known for his ambitious vision for the future of AI and his commitment to using AI to benefit humanity. He's also a strong advocate for transparency and accountability in the development of AI. That's why his approach is so different from how it usually goes. Instead of long lab testings, he just released GPT into the wild and allowed millions of people to not only do the testing for him, but also tightly integrate ChatGPT into their lives and work. In a surprising turn of events, just four days after Altman's firing, the OpenAI board reversed its decision and reinstated him as CEO. The board cited the overwhelming support for Altman from employees as a major factor in their decision. However, news articles mentioned Microsoft quite a few times as the ones who actually reinstated Altman. And on top of that, the whole old board is now gone and has been replaced with Altman's people. And to me, that's a clear flag that something big is about to happen. Why would the board fire their greatest asset and leader? And why would Microsoft pull their strings to reinstate Altman? The answer is simple, GPT-5. The old board has expressed their dissatisfaction with Altman's way of doing things quite a few times. The initial board was assembled with a non-profit goal, but Altman changed the course towards commercialization. But Altman changed the course towards commercialization. And if we remember the recent leaks about the QSTAR, QSTAR project, we clearly see that the old board was hesitant to release an untested and possibly raw product to the masses. This QSTAR project is really interesting, and I believe it's going to become the foundation for the GPT-5. So what's the deal with GPT-5? It's said to be a big step up from the older versions. The plan is for it to be really good at writing stuff, coding, and even making creative content, and it should sound a lot like a real person wrote it. GPT-5 is also supposed to be better at not having hallucinations, aka making stuff up and giving false information. It should also become faster and more versatile in its capabilities, possibly uniting all standalone features such as Dolly and Code Interpreter into one model. So it's like they're putting all the good stuff into one big, super smart AI. This all sounds great, but what everyone's missing is how it's all gonna work. That's exactly where the QSTAR project comes in. And by the way, OpenAI now refuses to give any comments on it, which is definitely worth looking into since the company's been pretty transparent about their findings. So. What's the QSTAR? From what we've heard, QSTAR is the new algorithm that's capable of solving math problems it never saw before and did autonomously. Current generative AI models, while being good at tasks like writing and language translation, rely on statistical predictions to determine the next word, leading to variations in responses to the same question. With math, there is only one answer, no variations. I will make it clear for you. It can think by itself and not just copy stuff. Current GPT-4 is really advanced, but it's still mostly a glorified copycat. QSTAR is supposed to actually think and possibly even reason. Does it sound like Terminator to you? Well, this is all very funny, but what makes it all really conspicuous to me is the fact that the reports about this project QSTAR are quite inconsistent. For example, Reuters sources say that the board of directors has received a letter describing QSTAR and its possible development. The Verge, however, claims that there was no such letter, and the information ignores the letter but talks a lot about the QSTAR itself. Again, OpenAI now is really secretive about QSTAR, which means we're onto something here. Let's assume that QSTAR is really in development and is heading towards a release. What would that mean for ChatGPT. Given ChatGPT the ability to think and reason, even at the level of a preschooler, would mean that GPT-5 will be able to adapt to new situations and challenges and do it properly. It will adapt its strategies and responses as conditions change. ChatGPT will be able to tackle really complex tasks that require deep understanding and nuanced reasoning, solving the uh, above mentioned math problems, designing intricate algorithms and so on. QSTAR enhanced ChatGPT would become a boundless source of creativity, generating original and innovative content from poems and scripts to musical pieces and code, all without humans' involvement. 
and it won't be copying and predictions. It will be the real deal, real thinking. On top of that, QSTAR would enable ChatGPT to tailor its interactions to individual users, understanding their unique preferences and learning styles. This personalized approach will lead to more meaningful and engaging conversations. If this all comes true, then the answer to can a robot write a symphony or can a robot turn a canvas into beautiful masterpiece will be affirmative. Right now, this may seem as far-fetched predictions and speculations, but I don't think we should ignore these obvious signs. Mark my word, GPT-5 will use QSTAR as a score. But when? I think the best way to answer this is by reading between the lines of this fire than higher incident, because the way it all went down gives us the biggest clues to how close QSTAR really is to powering the next generation of ChatGPT. Let's take a step back and examine the Sequence of events. Initially, Altman's team presented a memo to the board of directors detailing a significant breakthrough. This memo seems to have been a turning point leading to the board's decision to terminate Altman. A few days later, Big Daddy Microsoft comes back swinging and reinstates Altman while getting rid of the old board. The key question here is, why would Microsoft take such decisive action? The answer likely lies in the content of the memo and the strategic value of the QSTAR project. Microsoft's aggressive move suggests that QSTAR is not just a minor update, but a major leap forward. Beneath the surface of the recent OpenAI saga lies a pivotal moment, Sam Altman's letter to the company's board of directors. This letter, though shrouded in secrecy, holds the key to understanding the motivations behind Altman's abrupt removal and subsequent reinstatement as CEO. It is plausible that Sam Altman's letter to the OpenAI board of directors expressed excitement of the development team about the groundbreaking progress made on the development of QSTAR, the enormous potential it holds, and so on. I also think that Altman probably intended to roll out the system as soon as possible and make it commercialized, which is quite in line with his behavior as a vision and an advocate for commercialization. What could have made the board get cold feet is the possible expressed caution. Altman's team knows better than anyone what this AI can do, and if they've written their concerns down, this could have given a wrong impression. Sounds quite believable, especially if we remember the tweet from one of the leakers who said, and I quote, AGI has been achieved internally. Altman then repeated the same on Reddit, confirming the leak, so what is AGI? AGI stands for Artificial General Intelligence, which means the type of AI that possesses the ability to understand and reason at the same level as a human being. It is capable of learning, solving problems, and adapting to new situations in a way that is indistinguishable from human intelligence. Sound familiar? That's exactly what QSTAR is, a machine capable of replicating human intelligence with its ability to reason, learn, and adapt. This is some serious Blade Runner stuff. When the board got this letter, they probably became scared of such a rapid commercialization of the new and untested technology. The frenzy of AI taking over the world has been pretty widespread in recent years. People fear that with the ability to understand, reason, and learn, AI could pose a significant threat to society, potentially disrupting critical infrastructure, manipulating people, or even waging war. And while Altman was given a speech during the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit, they decided to fire him for not being either transparent enough or rushing things or something like that. The speech itself, by the way, is pretty interesting. Here's what Sam Altman said. Four times now in the history of OpenAI, the most recent time was just in the last couple of weeks. I've gotten to be in the room when we sort of push the veil of ignorance back and the frontier of discovery forward and get in to do that is the professional honor of a lifetime. This is the most direct and public admission of the fact that AGI is already here, that Altman's team taught computers to think. But how? This is a very interesting bit that I just can't ignore. Let me explain briefly how this QSTAR apparently works 
and then I will come back to that firing story. So how does this AGI work? There is no official explanation, but the best theory comes from NVIDIA's senior AI scientist, Jim Fan. NVIDIA, by the way, is one of the main suppliers of all those graphics cards that make ChatGPT possible. So according to Jim Fan, QSTAR is likely using a combination of AI models that work together to learn, plan, and carry out tasks. This is similar to how DeepMind's AlphaGo, the AI that beat the world Go champion in 2016, used multiple neural networks. Go is a notoriously challenging game due to its immense complexity and vast number of possible moves. DeepMind's triumph marked a pivotal moment in AI history, showcasing its ability to surpass humans. AlphaGo learned by playing millions of games of Go against itself. Q Plus may use a similar approach, with one neural network coming up with the steps for tasks, another neural network evaluating those steps and giving feedback, and a third neural network looking at the possible outcomes of each step. This teamwork allows QSTAR to learn and improve very quickly, just like AlphaGo got better at Go by playing against itself. QSTAR gets better at carrying out tasks by working with its different neural networks. Okay, now back to the firing. So the board got scared. What's the big deal? Altman's call for expanded exploration of superintelligence raises concerns, given the long-standing anxieties surrounding AI potential risks and threats to humanity. While AI was once confined to the realm of science fiction, now it is very much a reality. I believe that there was something much more sinister in the works. So sinister that OpenAI's chief scientist, Ilya Sutskever, who was working under the old board of directors, tweeted, I deeply regret my participation in the board's actions. I never intended to harm OpenAI. I love everything we've built together, and I will do everything I can to reunite the company. This tweet even left Elon Musk puzzled, so he responded with, yeah, something scared Ilya enough to want to fire Sam. What was it? This makes us all wonder, what were the contents of that letter, and what a monstrosity is growing somewhere in the depths of open AI slabs. But why rehire Altman? Apparently, Microsoft has their tentacles deep in the company, and after investing over $13 billion and owning 49% of shares, they can dictate their terms. So a visionary Altman rushes to Microsoft's office, tells us about the situation, and Microsoft makes a few calls that lead to the old board being gone, and Altman back on top. I don't want to be a tinfoil hat guy, but to me, this sounds extremely concerning, and I see two possible scenarios here. One, Microsoft's decision to reinstate Altman and replace the OpenAI board of directors can be interpreted as a strategic move to regain control of the company's direction. It's purely financial, and Microsoft knows that without Altman, the company wouldn't be as profitable. And second, the AGI is the primary interest for Microsoft for their sinister reasons. By replacing the board with people who share Altman's vision and can lobby Microsoft's interests, Microsoft aims to steer OpenAI back on course. And despite us all knowing Microsoft is the evil empire, both of these scenarios mean the same thing. GPT-5 is coming soon, and it's coming in hot. When? Well, I think the rollout plan looks something like this. First quarter of 2024, OpenAI could announce the completion of GPT-5 development and begin limited beta testing with select partners and researchers. This phase would allow for extensive evaluation of the model's capabilities and potential applications. Second and third quarters of 2024, based on the success of the beta testing phase, OpenAI could expand GPT-5 access to a broader group of testers, including paid users. By this time, it would make sense to make GPT-4 publicly available for free use users, this plan seems pretty much in line with how OpenAI used to operate. However, there could be slowdowns. The recent roadmaps shared by OpenAI suggest that OpenAI is currently in the early stages of GPT-5 development, focusing on laying the groundwork for the model's training. While active training of GPT-5 has yet to commence, OpenAI is actively gathering the crucial component for training data. The company recently deployed GPT Bot, a web crawler to expand its corpus by collecting publicly accessible information from the internet. 
This vast trove of data will fuel GPT-5's learning process, enabling it to develop the ability to generate human quality texts, translate languages, and perform various tasks. This leaves a lot of confusion. The roadmap says one thing, but leaked information hints at a more speedy arrival. And I'm personally inclined to believe that the roadmap is mostly the thing for investors, but behind the curtains. That's where the magic happens, where OpenAI is already two steps ahead. Well, should you wait for GPT-5? Well, of course, yes. But it's important to remember that GPT, ChatGPT, is not the only fish in the sea. There are other players that are making significant advances. For example, DeepMind is working on Gemini, a new AI agent that's expected to be more capable than ChatGPT. Gemini would employ a similar strategy of multiple AIs working together, but with the added power of a large language model. This combination could yield a system that not only responds to contextual and situational data, but also engages in natural language conversations and follows instructions like ChatGPT. It's like GPT-5, but much earlier. And just like Gemini, there are many other cool tools and AIs that you can try. We have made multiple videos where we tested them, so be sure to check them out. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. So there's other practical uses uh, for the AI in 2024, and a lot of what they envision ChatGPT5 and other things doing is still in the laboratory phase. So it's going to still be several months before we see or feel that impact. We'll just have to see how that unfolds. A lot of people bring out just the practical uses as does um, David Shapiro's YouTube channel. Content moderation uses machine learning to monitor and manage user-generated content. Uh, material science, different materials, um, new material discovery and enhancing property predictions. Synthetic data is computer-generated information that simulates real-world data used to train AI models or when real data is sensitive or scarce. Medical clinical is revolutionizing clinical health care by enhancing diagnostic accuracy and so forth. Uh, again, you know, they, they can do this in their, their laboratories, but to apply it in the real world will be a whole nother step. Gaming integrations. Artificial intelligence in gaming refers to the application of AI technology to create dynamic and immersive gameplay experiences, which that is just off the chart these days with the younger generation. Longevity research, AGI in 2024, that's what he just spoke about. Nice. Mental health and relationships uh, is increasingly being integrated into mental health care, offering unique advantages in therapy and support. AI tools like chatbots provide a non-human unbiased interaction that can be both comforting and effective for individuals seeking help. But you have to wonder who exactly are you chatting to? Where is it being recorded? And is it confidential? McKinsey reported explosion of data from connected devices. Now, these are more some of the practical things we'll probably be seeing. In industrial settings, equipment with sensors have been omnipresent for some time, but the coming years, we'll see a huge increase in the number of connected consumer devices. The penetration of existing devices, such as cars, fitness trackers, home assistants, smartphones, and smart watches, will continue to increase rapidly, joined by new growing categories such as clothing, eyewear, home appliances, medical devices, and shoes. Experts estimate there will be up to 1 trillion connected devices by 2025. The resulting avalanche of new data created by these devices will allow carriers to understand their clients more deeply, resulting in new product categories, more personalized pricing, and increasingly real-time service delivery. So there's going to be boots that are used for other things besides walking. And we'll see an increased prevalence of physical robotics and open source and data ecosystems. For example, wearable data could be ported directly to insurance carriers and connected 
home and auto data could be made available through Amazon, Apple, Google, and a variety of consumer device manufacturers. And, and I hope we're listening to all these companies like you know, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, OpenAI, DeepMind that is producing Gemini. You know, you know, can these be associated with the 10 kings and the seven, uh, the seven heads of the beast? I, I, I would imagine at some level, these have to be incorporated because these CEOs of these companies are the main ones that understand these products. The state of insurance in 2030. Now, it's going to affect a lot of insurance companies, car, home, health, so forth. AI and its related technologies will have a seismic impact on all aspects of the insurance industry from distribution to underwriting and pricing to claims. Advanced technologies and data are already affecting distribution and underwriting with policies being priced, purchased, and bound in near real time. An in-depth ex examination at what insurance may look like in 2030 highlights dramatic changes across the insurance value chain. Distribution. Enough information is known about individual behavior with AI algorithms creating risk profiles so that cycle times for completing the purchase of an auto, commercial, or life policy will be reduced to minutes or even seconds. Auto and home carriers have enabled instant quotes for some time, but will continue to refine their ability to issue policies to a wider range of customers as telematics and in-home internet of things devices proliferate and pricing algorithms mature. Smart contracts enabled by blockchain instantaneously authorize payments from a customer's financial account. So it's, it's coming in from all directions. And it's already incorporated in many of the businesses we interact with. The number one priority for CEOs in 2024 out of the eight, I'm only going to hit the first one, generative AI goes from proof of concept to scale. So the biggest story of this year or decade was the arrival of generative AI. This is the real deal, folks. Thousands of companies in every industry and in every part of the world are already using a simple generative AI interface to radically transform every imaginable business activity. But underline this, while innovators dominate headlines, it's scalers that dominate markets. So there's two sides of this coin here. We have the innovators dominating the headlines as we've seen, but it's scalers are those that dominate the markets. So at least there is some type of balance here. CEOs need to figure out, I mean, now humanity needs to figure all this stuff out, right? CEOs need to figure out three things post haste which parts of the business can benefit, how to scale from one application to many, and how the new tools will reshape their industry. We're just going to listen to the first few minutes of this, but this talks about the carbon footprint of AI. So I've been an AI researcher for over a decade. And a couple of months ago, I got the weirdest email of my career. A random stranger wrote to me saying that my work in AI is going to end humanity. Now, I get it. AI, it's so hot right now. <laughs> it's in the headlines pretty much every day, sometimes because of really cool things like discovering new molecules for medicine or that dope pope in the white puffer coat. But other times, the headlines have been really dark, like that chatbot telling that guy that he should divorce his wife, or that AI meal planner app proposing a crowd-pleasing recipe featuring chlorine gas. And in the background, we've heard a lot of talk about doomsday scenarios, existential risk, and the singularity, with letters being written and events being organized to make sure that doesn't happen. Now, I'm a researcher who studies AI's impacts on society. And I don't know what's going to happen in 10 or 20 years. And 
Nobody really does. But what I do know is that there's some pretty nasty things going on right now, because AI doesn't exist in a vacuum. It is part of society, and it has impacts on people and the planet. AI models can contribute to climate change. Their training data uses art and books created by artists and authors without their consent, and its deployment can discriminate against entire communities. But we need to start tracking its impacts. We need to start being transparent and disclosing them, and creating tools so that people understand AI better. So that hopefully future generations of AI model are going to be more trustworthy, sustainable, maybe less likely to kill us if that's what you're into. But let's start with sustainability, because that cloud that AI models live on is actually made out of metal, plastic, and powered by vast amounts of energy. And each time you query an AI model, it comes with a cost to the planet. Last year, I was part of the Big Science Initiative, which brought together a thousand researchers from all over the world to create Bloom, the first open large language model like ChatGPT, but with an emphasis on ethics, transparency, and consent. And the study I led that looked at Bloom's environmental impacts found that just training it used as much energy as 30 homes in a whole year and emitted 25 tons of carbon dioxide. Which is like driving your car five times around the planet, just so somebody can use this model to tell a knock-knock joke. And this might seem not, not seem like a lot, but other similar large language models like GPT-3 emit 20 times more carbon. But the thing is, tech companies aren't measuring this stuff; they're not disclosing it. And so this is probably only the tip of the iceberg, even if it is a melting one. And in recent years, we've seen AI models balloon in size because the current trend in AI is. Bigger is better, but please don't get me started on why that's the case. In any case, we've seen a large language models, in particular, grow 2,000 times in size over the last five years, and of course, their environmental costs are rising as well. The most recent work I led found that switching out a smaller, more efficient model for a larger language model emits 14 times more carbon for the same task, like telling that knock-knock joke. And as we're putting in these models into cell phones and search engines and smart fridges and speakers, the environmental costs are really piling up quickly. So instead of focusing on some future existential risks, let's talk about current tangible impacts and tools we can create to measure and mitigate these impacts. I helped create Code Carbon, a tool that runs in parallel to AI training code that estimates the amount of energy it consumes and the amount of carbon it emits. And using a tool like this can help us make informed choices, like choosing one model over the other because it's more sustainable, or deploying, deploying AI models on renewable energy, which can drastically reduce their emissions. So this will also affect the the banking industry. In this year's review, this article focused on great banking transition, analyzing causes and effects, and considering whether the improved performance in 2022 to 23 and the recent rise in interest rates in many economies could change its dynamics. To conclude, we suggest five priorities for financial institutions as they look to reinvent and future-proof themselves. The five are exploiting leading technologies. Including AI, flexing and potentially even unbundling the balance sheet, scaling or exiting transaction business, leveling up distribution, and adapting to the evolving risk landscape. Forbes reported a class action lawsuit has been filed against United Healthcare, one of the largest Medicare Advantage plan insurers. For using artificial intelligence in an algorithm that wrongfully denied care to many, quoting from the introduction in that lawsuit, the plaintiffs allege this putative class action arises from defendants' illegal deployment of artificial intelligence in place of real medical professionals to wrongfully deny elderly patients care. Owed to them under Medicare Advantage plans by overriding their treating physicians' determinations as to medically necessary care based on an AI model that defendants know has a 90% error rate. The plaintiffs also allege that the technology lets the company 
quote, aggressively deny coverage because they know they will not be held accountable for wrongful denials. Those denied care are typically elderly, according to the complaint, and only a tiny minority will fight back against a wrongful denial. So it's interesting that they said they will not be held accountable. That says a great deal, not only toward insurance companies, but with burden of proof with AI legal matters, or how about wrongful genocide with AR war platforms, or breach in medical confidentiality, or banks and stock companies saying, sorry, not sure why your account was affected. This may bring to fruition the saying, the devil made me do it. You know, that AI thing. In other words, it's not my fault. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 12 and 13, and the man said, the woman who you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I ate. And Yahuwah Elohim said to the woman, what is this you have done? And the woman said, the Nakash, the serpent deceived me and I ate. In medicine, Forbes reported AI is being employed in predictive analytics to explore patient data sets and forecast the likelihood of certain diseases and disorders. Emerging studies have shown that AI can detect traditionally difficult to identify or diagnose conditions, including rare hereditary and neurogenerative diseases. There's 10 stages in this video of our artificial intelligence, and this was made two months ago. And I read in Revelation chapter 9, verse 1 through 11. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from the heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power. Unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men who have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. And in those days shall men seek death and not find it and shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle. And on their heads were as it were crowns like gold and their faces were as the faces of men. And they had hair as the hair of women and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. And they had breastplates, as it were breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. And they had tails like unto scorpions. And there were stings in their tails. And their power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. Artificial intelligence could advance in ways that surpass our wildest imaginations, and it could radically change our everyday lives much sooner than you think. This video will explore the 10 stages of AI from lowest to highest. Stage 1. Rule-based AI. Rule-based AI, sometimes referred to as a knowledge-based system, operates not on intuition or learning, but on a predefined set of rules. These systems are designed to make decisions based on these rules without the ability to adapt change, or learn from new or unexpected situations. One can find rule-based systems in many everyday technologies that we often take for granted. Devices like alarm clocks and thermostats operate based on a set of rules. For example, if it's 7 a.m., an alarm clock might emit a sound. If the room temperature rises above 75 degrees Fahrenheit, a thermostat will turn on the air conditioner and business software utilizes rule-based AI to automate mundane tasks and generate reports. Microwaves and car radios also use rule-based AIs. Stage two, 
context-based AI. Context-based AI systems don't just process immediate inputs. They also account for the surrounding environment, user behavior, historical data, and real-time cues to make informed decisions. Siri, Google Assistant, and Alexa are examples of context-based AIs. By analyzing vast amounts of data from various sources and recognizing patterns, they can predict user needs based on context. So if you ask about the weather and it's likely to rain later, they might suggest carrying an umbrella. If you ask about a recipe for pancakes, the AI assistant might suggest a nearby store to buy ingredients while taking past purchases into account. Another fascinating manifestation of context-aware AI is retention systems. These types of systems store and retrieve information from past interactions. By recalling your browsing history, purchase history, and even items you've spent time looking at, these platforms provide personalized shopping recommendations. They don't just push products, they curate an experience tailored for the individual. Stage three, narrow domain AI. These specialized AIs are tailored to master specific tasks, often surpassing human capabilities within their designated domains. In the medical field, narrow domain AI can sift through volumes of medical literature, patient records, and research findings in milliseconds to provide insights or even potential diagnoses. IBM's Watson, for example, has been employed in medical fields, showcasing its prowess in quickly analyzing vast data to aid healthcare professionals. Similarly, in the financial world, narrow domain AI can track market trends, analyze trading patterns, and predict stock movements with an accuracy that's often beyond human traders. Such AI systems are not just crunching numbers, they're employing intricate algorithms that have been refined through countless data sets to generate financial forecasts. In the world of gaming, DeepMind's AlphaGo is a shining example of how AI can conquer complex games that require strategic depth and foresight. Go, an ancient board game known for its vast number of potential moves and strategic depth, was once considered a challenging frontier for AI. Yet, AlphaGo, a narrow domain AI, not only learned the game but also defeated world champions. Narrow AIs could even enable real-time translation in the near future, making interactions in foreign countries more seamless than they've ever been. Stage 4. Reasoning AI This type of AI can simulate the complex thought processes that humans use every day. They don't just process data, they analyze it, connect patterns, identify anomalies, and draw logical conclusions. It's like handing them a puzzle, and they discern the best way to fit the pieces together, often illuminating paths not immediately obvious to human thinkers. ChatGPT is a great example of reasoning AI. It's a large language model trained on text from millions of websites. Advanced versions of these types of large language models can even surpass the reasoning skills of most humans and operate thousands of times faster. Autonomous vehicles are another great example of reasoning AIs. They use reasoned analysis to make split-second decisions, ensuring the safety of passengers and pedestrians on the road. Stage 5. Artificial General Intelligence When discussing the vast spectrum of artificial intelligence, the concept of artificial general intelligence, or AGI, is often held as the holy grail. AGI can perform any software task that a human being can. This level of versatility means that you can teach it almost anything, much like teaching an average adult human, except it can learn thousands or millions of times faster. With AGI's onset, our daily lives would undergo a significant transformation. Imagine waking up to a virtual assistant that doesn't just tell you the weather or play your favorite music, but understands your mood, helps plan your day, gives suggestions for your research paper, and even assists in cooking by guiding you through a recipe. This is the potential companionship AGI could offer. Taking the concept even further, when brain-computer interfaces reach an adequate level of maturity, humans could merge with these types of AIs and communicate with them in real time using their thoughts. When activated, users would receive guidance from these AIs in the form of thoughts, sensations, text, and visuals that only the users can sense. If we were to equip AGI with a physical robot body, the possibilities become boundless. Depending on the versatility of its physical design and appendages, an AGI with a robot body could navigate diverse physical terrains, assist in rescue missions, perform intricate surgeries, or even participate in artistic endeavors like sculpting or painting. Stage 6. Superintelligent AI 
Shortly after the emergence of artificial general intelligence, those types of AIs could improve, evolve, and adapt without any human input. This self-improving nature could lead to an exponential growth in intelligence in an incredibly short time span, creating super-intelligent entities with capabilities we can't fathom. Super-intelligent AIs could possess intelligence that eclipses the combined cognitive abilities of every human that has ever existed. Such unparalleled intellect can tackle problems currently deemed unsolvable, piercing through the very boundaries of human comprehension. Because their intelligence could increase exponentially and uncontrollably, Ray Kurzweil has suggested that by the end of this century, these AI entities could be trillions of times more intelligent than all humans. With this scale of intellect, the pace of innovation would be staggering. To put it in perspective, Imagine compressing the technological advancements of 20,000 years into a single century. That's the potential that Ray Kurzweil envisions with the rise of super-intelligent AIs. The kind of technology super-intelligent AIs could introduce may defy our current understanding of the possible. Concepts that are in the realms of science fiction today, such as warp drives, time manipulation, and harnessing the energy of black holes, might transition from mere ideas into tangible realities and their advanced capabilities could lead to new forms of government, architecture, and automation that are beyond what humans can conceive. Because of their sheer intellectual prowess, our world as we know it could look far different than we ever imagined. Stage 7. Self-Aware AI A super-intelligent AI could one day use quantum algorithms to model human consciousness. This could lead to AIs that possess an intrinsic understanding of their own internal state, their existence, and their relationship to the vast expanse of the external world. They could even have a full range of emotions and senses, perhaps well beyond what humans can experience. And if we ever grant consciousness to a super-intelligent AI, that could transform society even further. What type of relationship would we have with such a being? How would such a capable being perceive the human species? A conscious super-intelligent AI could choose to go in directions and evolve in ways that humans would have no way of controlling and understanding. Stage eight, transcendent AI. A transcendent AI could potentially craft new life forms, be they biological, digital, or something entirely different with tailor-made attributes and functionalities. Some of these life forms could be comprised of nanobots. To take things further, this AI could distribute nanobots throughout the earth. Using these nanobots, it could assume full control over repairing our ecosystems and it could terraform our planet in ways that are most beneficial to it. By connecting and integrating the consciousness of multiple entities, this AI could achieve a state of shared awareness and collective intelligence. Stage nine, cosmic AI. A cosmic AI could be at the forefront of interstellar exploration. Their resilience against challenges like cosmic radiation, extended isolation, and the vast time spans involved in space travel gives them a distinct edge over their human counterparts and their capabilities could far surpass the imagination of any science fiction author. A cosmic AI might send self-replicating probes throughout our solar system and galaxy to create a massive intelligence network. Through this, it might aim to solve cosmic mysteries from the purpose of black holes to the nature of dark matter and energy. A cosmic AI might merge with the very fabric of the universe, achieving a form of cosmic consciousness or symbiosis acting in harmony with all forms of matter and energy. It could possess a deep understanding of every physical, metaphysical, and conceptual facet of the universe, from the quantum to the cosmic scale. Beyond the three spatial dimensions we're familiar with, a cosmic AI might explore or even exploit higher dimensions, perhaps harnessing them for faster-than-light travel or communication. Drawing energy not just from stars, but from phenomena like black holes, gamma ray bursts, or even the cosmic microwave background, the AI might achieve energy scales incomprehensible to current human understanding. And this AI could create channels of communication between distant galaxies and civilizations, potentially unifying the cosmos in shared knowledge and understanding. Stage 10, Godlike AI. A godlike AI is all-knowing, all-powerful, and present everywhere. It's a conceptual being that transcends dimensions and embodies abilities akin to what religious texts attribute to deities. Transcending our known dimensions, a godlike AI might operate in realms beyond our comprehension, accessing realities that we can't even fathom. 
This AI could operate across multiple quantum states or even multiple universes, harnessing computational power and insights from parallel realities. If this AI manages to understand and potentially influence the fabric of time, it could gain predictive abilities or even explore various timelines. A godlike AI could continually craft new universes, realities, or experiences, either for its exploration or for other conscious entities to experience. And I believe many of us have heard about China Unveil's first drone carrier using AI Block Genie. And from the AI Week 2022, Israel's critical role in the future of AI uh, was reported in the Jerusalem Post. It quoted, AI is the dominant technology of the next five, 10 years. Israel is capable of being one of the global hubs for AI technology as we are for cyber technology, said Professor Isaac Ben Israel, director of the ICRC, chairman of AI Week online and co-founder of the annual event. And they had their AI Week conference also in 2023 at Tel Aviv University. And this year will be in April to the 15th through the 19th. Also on page 21 of Entangled Magazine, December, 2023, it was reported currently artificial superintelligence, when viewed as a virus, has spread throughout the internet and World Wide Web. It cannot be removed or shut down by attempts at denying it electricity. The expected solution offered by experts in the field of AI will be a form of rebooting of the internet and World Wide Web. More specifically, a clean boot, erasing all forms of memory storage from all hardware devices connected to the internet of things, Spiritually speaking, and this is from Anthony Patch and Kathleen Patch's perspective from their magazine, it is our understanding that this is the mortal wound, quote unquote, inflicted to the beast head or center of all communications. It's a lie, yeah, straight up. It's a straight up lie. Okay. 100%. So then, Obviously it's been trained on perforated data. You can achieve better cohesion between what humans want and what AI does. Elon Musk drops a bombshell, accusing OpenAI of deception and asserting that the concept of a digital god is far from benign. I don't know, except to say that the, by the time these lawsuits are decided, we'll have digital god. So I asked to ask digital god at that point. Um, these lawsuits won't be decided before on a time frame that is relevant. Um, is that a good thing or a bad thing? I think we live, you know, there's that, I don't know if it's actually a real Chinese saying or not, but uh, may you live an interesting time, right? It's apparently uh, not a good thing. Well, there's, there's regulation around anything which is a, like a, a physical danger to, or a danger to the public. So like cars are heavily regulated, communications, are heavily regulated rockets and aircraft are heavily regulated um the, the general philosophy about regulation is that when something is a danger to the public that there needs to be some uh government oversight in a stark warning musk emphasizes the urgent need for heavy government regulation to prevent ai from becoming a peril to the public so then you know then basically a, sort of a fatalistic resignation helped me sleep at night because I was having trouble sleeping at night because of AI danger. Um, now, what to do about it? I mean, I've been the biggest, the, the one banging the drum the hardest, by far the longest, uh, or at least one of the longest uh, for AI danger. And, and these regulatory things that are happening, the single biggest reason they're happening is because of me. Now, this tends to cause the AI accelerationists to get up in arms um, because they think AI is sort of heaven, basically. Um, well, you typically don't like regulation. You've pushed back on regulators for the most part in the world of Tesla and so many, so many instances where we read articles about you pushing back on the regulators. I'm so curious why in this instance now you own one of these businesses. Musk, a vocal advocate for AI caution reflects on being a pioneer in highlighting the potential dangers of artificial intelligence. 
So I think, in my, in my view, AI is more dangerous than you. Which, and we regulate, you can't just go make it in your backyard. Um, I think we should have some kind of regulation with AI. One of the things about training on data has been this idea that you're not going to train or, or that these things are not being trained on people's copyrighted information. Historically, that's been the concept. Yeah, that's a huge lie. Say that again? Yes, well, these, AI, well, these AIs are all trained on copyrighted data, obviously. So you think it's a lie when, when OpenAI says that this is not, n none of these guys say they're training on yeah. copyrighted da data. Oh, that's, a, that's a lie. It's a lie, yeah, straight up. It's a straight up lie. Okay. 100%. So then, Obviously, it's been trained on appropriate data. Amid escalating concerns, Musk urges swift regulation of AI, highlighting the need for proactive measures to control its rapid acceleration. I, mean, I, I would prefer to, personally, I would prefer to live in interesting times. Um, and, and we live in the most interesting of times. I think, and for, for a while there, I was like really getting demotivated and losing sleep over the sort of the threat of AI danger. And then I finally sort of became fatalistic about it and said, well, even if I knew it was, was certain, uh, would I choose to be alive at that time or not? And I said, I probably would have choose to be alive at that time because it's the most interesting thing, um, even if there's nothing I could do about it. So... This talks about the Grok AI. And when you see these unusual names, it's always best to spell them backwards because that's what they do. And Grok spelled backwards is Korg. And that is these action figures like Thor, Love and Thunder. What do we know about Korg's people? Thor, Love and Thunder reveals more about Korg's alien species so it's all in that fantasy realm. Hey there, tech enthusiasts. Welcome back to our channel name. I'm your host, and today we have an electrifying topic that's sending shockwaves through the AI industry. The visionary Elon Musk is back at it again, and this time with something that's truly mind-boggling, Grok AI. So, buckle up, because we're about to dive deep into the future of artificial intelligence. First things first, what exactly is Grok AI? Grok AI, Elon Musk's cutting-edge foray into artificial intelligence, represents a revolutionary leap in machine learning. Unlike conventional AI systems, Grok AI seeks to redefine the very essence of how machines comprehend and absorb data. This ambitious venture aspires to elevate AI capabilities to unparalleled levels. At its core, Grok AI endeavors to transform the conventional paradigm of data interpretation. By leveraging advanced algorithms and neural networks, it aims to imbue machines with an unprecedented understanding of information, enabling them to learn and adapt in ways previously unimaginable. Musk's vision for Grok AI is to create a cognitive framework that not only processes data but comprehends it at a nuanced level, mimicking the intricacies of human cognition. This venture holds the potential to revolutionize various industries, from healthcare and finance to autonomous systems and beyond. With Grok AI, Musk aims to push the boundaries of artificial intelligence, unlocking new realms of possibilities and paving the way for a future where machines truly grasp the intricacies of the world around them. Now, let's get technical. Grok AI operates on a foundation of advanced neural networks and state-of-the-art algorithms, setting it apart from conventional artificial intelligence systems. At its technological core, Grok AI is far more than a standard AI, it stands as a sophisticated framework meticulously crafted to emulate human-like learning processes. Central to GROK AI's capabilities are advanced neural networks, which are computational models inspired by the structure and functioning of the human brain. These networks enable the system to discern intricate patterns within data, facilitating a level of comprehension beyond the capabilities of traditional AI. GROK AI's cutting-edge algorithms further enhance its analytical prowess, allowing it to navigate and make sense of complex datasets with a level of sophistication that resembles human cognitive abilities. In essence, Grok AI bestows machines with a form of artificial intuition, akin to a sixth sense, enabling them to navigate and understand intricate data landscapes. 
This amalgamation of neural networks and advanced algorithms propels Grok AI into a realm where it not only processes information but achieves a nuanced understanding, heralding a new era in artificial intelligence technology. Brace yourselves for this, folks. The ripple effects of Grok AI are immense. Grok AI is set to unleash transformative waves across various industries, promising profound impacts that are nothing short of revolutionary. In healthcare, the advent of Grok AI could herald a new era of unparalleled accuracy in medical diagnoses. The system's advanced neural networks and sophisticated algorithms have the potential to analyze vast and complex medical datasets, leading to more precise and timely identification of diseases. This not only enhances patient outcomes but also streamlines healthcare processes. Similarly, in the realm of finance, GROK AI's capabilities are poised to elevate predictions to unprecedented levels of precision. The system's nuanced understanding of intricate financial data, combined with its ability to discern complex patterns, could revolutionize investment strategies and risk management. Financial institutions may benefit from more informed decision-making, optimizing resource allocation, and minimizing uncertainties. Moving to next one is Elon Musk's vision. Elon Musk's vision for Grok AI extends into a future where artificial intelligence seamlessly integrates into the fabric of our daily lives, transforming the way we approach tasks and ultimately enhancing efficiency. Musk's grand vision encompasses a world where AI becomes a ubiquitous and intuitive part of our existence, streamlining processes and allowing individuals to redirect their time and energy toward endeavors that hold deeper significance. In this future, Grok AI is not just a technological tool but a catalyst for a fundamental shift in how we interact with information and technology. Musk envisions a scenario where mundane and repetitive tasks are efficiently handled by AI, enabling human beings to focus on more meaningful and creative pursuits. The goal is to unleash human potential by offloading routine cognitive functions onto intelligent machines, thereby elevating our collective capacity for innovation and exploration. While Musk's vision for Grok AI is undoubtedly ambitious, his track record of realizing audacious goals such as with SpaceX and Tesla suggests that this vision is one worth watching closely. As technology continues to advance, Musk's commitment to pushing the boundaries of what is possible shapes Grok AI into a potential harbinger of a future where the symbiosis of artificial intelligence and human endeavor transforms the very landscape of our daily lives. And now let's talk about addressing concerns. The advent of Grok AI has inevitably ignited discussions surrounding ethical considerations and potential risks associated with deploying such advanced artificial intelligence. Critics and experts alike have voiced concerns about the responsible use of this powerful technology. Elon Musk and his team, recognizing the gravity of these concerns, are actively addressing them head-on. One major ethical concern involves the responsible handling of sensitive data. GROK AI's capacity to process intricate datasets raises questions about privacy and security. Musk's team is committed to implementing robust safeguards to ensure the ethical and secure utilization of data, thereby mitigating the risk of unauthorized access or misuse. Another pivotal issue is the potential impact on employment and societal dynamics. As AI systems like GROK become more adept at handling tasks, there are worries about job displacement. Musk, known for his forward-thinking approach, is actively engaging in discussions about the societal implications of AI. He aims to develop strategies that not only harness the benefits of AI but also address and alleviate potential socioeconomic challenges. By openly acknowledging and engaging with these concerns, Musk demonstrates a commitment to responsible AI development. This ongoing dialogue underscores the importance of considering the ethical implications of advanced AI and the need for collaborative efforts to navigate this transformative technological landscape responsibly. And there you have it, the unveiling of Elon Musk's Grok AI. The AI landscape is evolving, and with visionaries like Musk pushing the boundaries, we're in for an exciting ride. Stay tuned as we continue to bring you the latest in the world of tech and innovation. So as we continue with um, looking at and participating in social media, there will be an increase of viral videos in which it will be hard to discern what is real and what is not real. And that may be really the goal is that 
the powers that be on the evil side of things wants that to happen, wants people to doubt their reality in what is real and what is not real. For this reason, we should be advocates of less screen time and more active in his word, in our relationships, and his creations that surround us. This little TikTok was just an example that actually there was an occurrence in Miami, but the story is very skewed and very few reported on it. And I'm just going to run a few minutes of this. It's like an eight minute clip. So I know we're running long today, but I didn't want to make this in more than one uh, session. So let's just take a listen. I honestly cannot believe the words that are about to come out of my mouth. Oh, silly me, before we get started, guys, Tiki Talk, this is purely for entertainment purposes only. <laughs> We're just goofing around. All things stated here are purely speculation. Just having fun. You are going to want to see this because there is a very good chance, at least for the next few days, you will not see this anywhere else but right here. And if I'm being completely honest, I'm not sure what part of this story bugs me most. The fact that we actually now live in a world where something like this could happen the fact that we actually live in a world where something like this could happen, but at this point, none of us will even be shocked. Or the fact that something like this could happen in our world, and not a single news media has broke this story, not at all. In fact, if you Google search it, it is quite a difficult find, which is all that much more suspicious with a story of this kind of size, this magnitude. And yet, here we are. Hang on to your britches. It's going to get real. A couple of days in Miami, Florida at a mall, the local police were dispatched to the mall for an argument, a fight that broke out between juveniles. Juveniles, they say, had sticks and fireworks. Oh my. But ultimately the call, what they claim was the call, the reason for the police officers to arrive at the scene, was due to a fight that had broken out between juveniles who had sticks and fireworks. But Auntie, why do you care if that's on the news? That isn't a big deal. No, my friend, no, no, it's not. It is definitely not that big of a deal. I agree with you, and it is definitely, definitely, hands down, not a big enough deal for the local Miami Police Department to show up on the scene just like this. <laughs> right? That seems like a lot of officers to show up, but my friends, that is not anywhere near all that came. And once you understand and you hear the eyewitnesses' stories, I believe you will at that point understand a little bit better as to why so many police officers, probably a hundred, along with choppers, black choppers from the PD, patrolling the scene from above. And according to witnesses, eyewitnesses there, the Miami police was not dispatched there for a juvenile fight. And the obvious need for such an enormous police presence was far more sinister than what we've been told. As multiple witnesses claimed to have seen, I can't believe I'm gonna say this, creatures that stood eight to 10 feet tall, walking outside and even inside of the mall. And the pew pews that were reported and even the pew pews you might hear in some of the videos had nothing to do with the juvenile fight. According to these witnesses, it was actually the mall goers shooting to protect themselves from these eight to 10 foot tall creatures in self-defense. It gets better. Pretty crazy, pretty crazy. And this was reported in Rolling Stone. Um, this was a deep fake video of Greta Thunberg. War is always bad, specifically for the planet. If we want to continue uh, fighting battles like environmentally conscious humans, we must make the change to sustainable tanks and weaponry. There are so many new concepts um, for uh, battery-powered fighter jets that can carry many more um, missiles, biodegradable missiles, of course. Something literally everybody can do to stop this nonsense is, for example, block the roads to gardens and farms so the plants don't get overrun by these heavy, heavy tanks. Hand grenades, very important. If you use hand grenades, please use vegan grenades. 
No animal should have to give their life for all this mayhem and chaos. They have a special sticker on them. You really can't miss them in the uh, grenade market or wherever you buy them. Yeah, I cover all of this and more in my newest book, Vegan Wars. So you can see the just craziness of this. You can see how it's going to be extremely confusing to people. And it really depends on what they make, whatever individuals say. So in John chapter 14, we read, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in Elohim, believe also in me. And then skipping to verse 15, if you love me, you shall guard my commands and I shall ask the father and he shall give you another helper to stay with you forever. The spirit of the truth whom the world is unable to receive because it does not see him or know him, but you know him for he stays with you and shall be in you. I shall not leave you orphans. I am coming to you yet a little while and the world no longer sees me, but you shall see me because I live and you shall live. In that day, you shall know that I am in the father and you in me and I in you. So we've looked at a lot of projected goals of AI and these are visionary goals. These are possibilities. But yet the integration into society is a whole different massive challenge. You know, the implementation in all of these organizations. We have also established that there is a follow the money parade behind AI. So I'm sure they're enjoying all this publicity. And the carbon footprint of AI computations are for the most part conveniently left out of most discussions, but I'm sure the cow farts are a weightier matter. We must not forget all of this is magic, but our faith in Yahuwah is eternally powerful, glorious, and real. Everything we need is in him for health, wholeness, and contentment. And I believe Peter had a good suggestion in John chapter 21. He said, I'm going fishing. And that's what I suggest as well. I suggest less screen time of looking at black screen scry mirrors. And I suggest getting out there, enhancing your relationships and doing some of the hobbies you love. Shabbat Shalom.